everybody to live longer and prosper. Politics. These are the voyages that many people have tried to go. Left wing. Right wing. Communism. Socialism. Conservatism. Liberalism. Libertarianism. Is Starfleet? Which side of the aisle is Starfleet on? Most people say that the Federation and Starfleet are socialists and communists. Hmm. But I have 40 points. 40 points of things that would make Star Trek seem conservative, seem traditionalist to a degree. Not with the modern day trick, but with the trick I grew up with, which was mostly TNG. Not ever very much of a fan of the original series. It has its good stuff, and it doesn't. Now, some of these points are pretty weak. I'll agree. Let me start off with point one, which is the weakest of all points. Jokes aside, Gene Roddenberry was a police officer. He was a cop. And the modern day conservatives are back to blue, right? Back to blue. Now, I know that's like the weakest point ever, but um, think about it. Would I mean, with a lot of the modern day defund the police, would they really be for police? It's a good question. Oh, by the way, you're allowed to, and I encourage this, I encourage y'all to comment in the comments below what you think, and to try to uh, disagree with my points or um, whatever. So uh, point two is in Star Trek, well, at least as I was saying, it's the next generation, Star Trek Voyager, and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I also like Star Trek Enterprise, which was a prequel, but... Okay, point number two is they have traditional roles of male and female in the show. Usually the male roles are dominated by the traditional male roles and the female roles are dominated by traditional female roles. Now, based on personality type and based on traditionalism, um, another thing is they don't see skin color. Conservatives don't see skin color either. It's liberals that always see skin color and always want to create affirmative action. They see you sex, race, skin color. Uh, they're the ones that always point that out. Another thing is traditional marriage. Traditional marriage is a big thing on, on the show. Um, several people got married. They had relationships between men and women. Women had specific qualities and were treated as as women, even if they were career women, even if they were women that were. But you see that more women were in the fields of, were in, in certain traditional women fields and more men were, are in the predominant fields. You, you do notice that there's more male captains and more male commanders and of that nature while there are females in the show there and of course you know traditional marriage and traditional dating male and female relationships you now in the woke stuff you see that in the newer version of it you see all this stuff all this other stuff but in the original the TNG areas you didn't see LGBT 
transgender gay stuff. The closest you saw for a transgender thing would be Dex. That's because her species in can can be in the host of either a male or a female. So it switches from, from host to host. Um, they have a point four. They have rights, which uh, they have a constitution. They have the United Federation of Ch Charter. They have certain guarantees, which are kind of like our rights in the constitution, which I'll go on further with a few of the points. Um, uh, in Star Trek, you saw a lot of freedom of religion. That's my fifth point. Uh, some of these points will back up other points. Why not? Point six. Now, I, I recently discovered that point six isn't exactly 100% correct because there was an episode called The Child. Uh, when I was watching other people's videos of the politics of Star Trek, I found out about this episode. Apparently, I never saw this episode. But uh, I was going to say that it's point six is their pro-life um humanity and life uh that they, they they debate humanity and life there's an episode early on in the star trek the next generation series where they debate whether data is a person is human is it, or is he just intellectual property of starfleet is he owned or is he a person? When they find out that he's a person, he can't be used. They have a, a, a jury about it. They have a, uh, a basically a military procedures, which part of that is another point. Law and order is one of my points eventually down the line. Um, but uh, they even risk violating the prime directive in several cases to save alien species. Um, so even though the private directive is point seven, which is my next point, um, anyway, the child is, is an episode where a woman, I believe one of the main characters, she gets pregnant. And they debate on whether she should get rid of the pregnant the the, the pregnancy because she didn't get pregnant on her own. She got pregnant from basically an alien impregnated her. But for the most part, I don't see any talk of abortion on the show. Most people get pregnant, want to have their children. Children are a big part of the show, comparatively speaking. Um, just like relationships between men and women are a big part of the show and um stuff of that nature they all are always talking about what it means to be human what it is humanity a hum all throughout history they talk about history but all throughout it, it's a lot of questions involving humanity and individuality and of that nature now, the Prime Directive is number seven, which basically the Prime Directive says that you are not to interfere with less advanced societies. <coughs> now, that's a fairly conservative thing. Maybe. Um, point... Uh, I'm not 100% sure on whether that's very conservative, but it is the idea of law and order, having a, the constitution, having a constitution, having rights, and having a charter, are all like conservative things because of law and order. Doesn't necessarily make the stuff in them always the best particular thing. But uh, I'm going to digress. I'm going to go to point eight, which is everybody worked. Everybody had a job, everybody did their job, and everybody worked, which means everybody had a good work ethic. Everybody, everybody ate healthy, they worked, and they had a good work ethic. I believe good, having a good work ethic is a conservative thing. Conservatives like work. Uh, we like people to be working. Um, so I'm going to give that one. They also, point nine is they had a hierarchy. 
there was clearly certain people are ranked higher than other people. You have that they do have a political structure where those people in political power are a higher rank, and they had the military Starfleet, which is also a higher rank. They clearly had a hierarchy of who was in power, who was in control, who was in charge, basically, is what I'm getting at. Point number 10 is they had a strong military, which is Starfleet. Starfleet is a very strong military um, thing. Uh, point 11 is they believed in almost almost free trade. It's not quite, but uh, it's pretty close to a free trade with limited regulations. Didn't see very many regulations on trade because if you did the tr pro trouble with tribbles, would have never happened because they would have been deemed a class whatever evasive species and you wouldn't be able to just get them for pets. Um, there, so there must be limited regulations when it comes to trade between individuals because anytime you see trade on the show, it's always done between individual A and individual B. Uh, they also, point 12 is property rights. You are allowed to own your own land, your own businesses, uh, whatever. Um, for examples of this, Picard um, is uh, own, owns his own vineyard um, in France. John Luke Picard owns his own vineyard in France, or his family owns the vineyard, or whatever. Another example is Commander Sisko's dad has his own restaurant. So we know that private property and businesses exist and we do know that while the show says that they don't use money we know for a fact they use money um uh which is point which backs up point 16 they use a thing called credits it's like an invisible money system and i guess it's for you, you it, I guess it's for use to buy personal items that isn't provided exactly for by the. But they have some kind of money system. They have an economic system. Um, point, uh, point thirteen, which is actually part of uh, one of the rights. I think it's the twelfth right or whatever or guarantee, I mean, uh, which is freedom to exercise in the arts your way. Basically, in your leisure time, and your free time, you're allowed to exercise the arts your way. You aren't told you have to learn this type of music or that type of music or this, this, you have to be, learn painting or you have to, you, you aren't limited in that, in that scope. Also, you aren't limited in the intellectual scope when it comes to science, philosophy, history, religion, all that. You can basically pursue your own interests in your own free time. Uh, they, the point 14 is about individual liberty um, uh, and, you know, the pursuit of happiness, basically. The show is highly about individuality even though you're in a corp, uh, corporate type setting. You're in a community, but it's still a lot about individual liberty. Um, there was the ability to be conscientious. Point 15 is the fact that you could, there are what would be considered conscientious objectors. Um, you had the right to talk directly to your superior officers, cons object to doing certain things if it violated your guarantees or your liberties or your religion or whatever uh, and other various different uh, different reasons for being consensus objective that is exercised on a show point uh 16 is basically higher rank got higher pay or higher privileges which is a very conservative thing to believe because the people at the top get paid more based on their skills, ranks, skill setting. And the way in the military you get pushed up is basically based off of 
you rank. You know, you, so the so if the 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 higher rank you had, uh, the more con- accommodations you had, the better pay or privileges you would re- would require. Um, they're actually t- uh, point seventeen is the fact that they're actually tough on crime. There are punishments. Now there is no death penalty except for I believe, I think there's one, one or two exceptions to the no death penalty rule, like uh, but. Like, literally, people, commanders in some cases, or captains committed what would be considered treason in some cases and still did not lose their position of power. Um, so, yeah. A point 18 is uh, that they were very good at helping their allies. That's a very conservative thing um, to believe in, helping your allies. Um Basically, the infinite outcomes, infinite diversity, whatever that is. Uh, point 19, again, is they're very cooperative with one another. Um, very cooperative in like a business relations corporation type sense. Um, um, point 20 is uh, basically the military industrial complex I'm going to throw in here. Uh, there was lots of factories, manufacturing, building ships, um, building new weapons technologies, uh, new science technologies. All these are very, which would also be big pharma too, you know, big pharma and military industrial complex. All these, <coughs> excuse me, all these um, things are um, conservative in nature, I would believe. You, of course, like I said, y'all can always comment down below what you, if you think some of these points aren't necessarily conservative or not. Point twenty-one is eminent domain. They kind of believed in an eminent domain, colonization, uh, the capital of the planet. Even was you know the capital of the Federation is uh, of course Earth, which I think is one of my points. Like or you know. Um, Point 22 is scientific study, the pursuit of knowledge. Um, they're, they're really people who believe in real science, the real, not this junk science that we have now. They actually believe in science. Uh, point 23, which I've kind of grown over this partially before already, but the United Federation of Planets Charter and constitution are based on the United States' constitution. They have an executive branch, they have a legislative branch, they have a judicial branch, they have the the, the official government of the Univer- United Federation of Planets is a federal constitutional republic. Just like the ours, which is a very highly conservative thing. Um, um, I even wrote down the charter of the Universal Federation of Planets because that's the only thing you really see. But from reading it, um, or you can kind of read that it sounds just like the Declaration of Independence to a degree, which is a conservative thing. It sounds kind of like uh, that, you know. And it also sounds like the United Nations Charter. Um, which again, United Nations was originally created as a conservative principle. Now it's gone way too left. I'm not going to really read the charter, but I did write it down. You can look it up. It's not complete. And there's like literally nowhere where anybody has a complete copy of the Constitution or any of these other things like the Code of to judicial code so one can assume that it basically similarly runs like ours i found some information about some of the stuff which i will get to later um but uh they believe uh i'm now on point 24 uh due process of law is a big thing um point 25 is they got free freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Point 26 is an interesting point. It's a kind of a state's rights issue point because it's, um, there other co- nations 
or planets that join the Federation can have their own militaries. This is a very interesting thing. Um, so Starfleet is basically the military for all, but they can have their own militaries too. Um, point 27 is there's guarantees in the Constitution. I went over some of these. Um, uh, uh, these are um, like uh, criminals get counsel, um, which is due process. Um, like um, self mm, uh, rights against self incrimination, stuff like that. Um, artists' works are protected under the law, so it's they got a some sort of um, oh shoot, what do you call those? Um, <laughs> they're called um, patents. Basically, there's some kind of patent system. Um, is what I was getting at. Point twenty eight. Uh, of course, there's the Code of Justice, Law and Order. I already went over that with due process and a few other things. Like I said, some points over merge with each other. Um, point 29 is uh, the state's rights of secession. Basically, a member world can leave the, um, the Federation. Now, they have to have two-thirds majority to leave, but they can leave, so that's a very interesting thing. Uh, point 30 is even in their uh, one of their first amendment uh, that they added to their constitution abolished slavery I'm not sure why it was in there but it abolishes slavery for member worlds anyway um, the point point 31 is of course the that part of their stuff is based off the Magna Carta um, point 32 is there's no caste based discrimination so if you're in the rich people caste or the poor people they didn't have a dis, they didn't have a case caste based discrimination so no discrimination based on sex age religion financial resources etc um I don't know how uh, the point 33 I just wrote this down I'm not sure how conservative this is but um, it basically you can't be held over three months in jail for contempt of court so they're very conservative when it comes to um, I would say uh, how long people go stay in jail so they're trying to get people rehabilitated and out in the workforce a lot faster is what I'm getting from that. Uh, that's kind of what I got from that. Um, um, point 34 is no interference with uh, other uh, foreign states. Um, basically, if they're not part of the Federation, you don't interfere with how they do things and run their government, which is kind of kind of a conservative type thing. Um, point 35 is their Article 51, which is um, how, how they treat refugees and they allow them to, refugees of war, how they allow them to come into and become citizens of the Federation. <coughs> point 36 is... Um, is a the good record keeping that's a very conservative thing record keeping this one was um because i found out that they keep all court documents no court documents are ever sealed um all court documents are kept and they're not ever supposed to be sealed um not sure why i wrote article 109 section 47 but i guess you can look that one up um anyway point 37 is there is a strong central government many conservatives actually believe in a strong central government um and point 38 i already mentioned that but the government is located on earth oh uh, and um point 39 is um that they're very traditionalist uh, they have all kinds of holidays like Federation Day. 
Uh, they like their history. Um, they're very traditionalist in the traditionalist sense, as a uh, point one and two and a few of the other points are into. Now, point 40 is that they're logical more than emotional. Um, they try to think with logic more than emotion. Even though they think with individuality, they try not to think too emotional. They try to think more logical. Even though it's individualistic, it's also more logical. Uh, as you can see on the show, many people try to think with a more logical approach than a, an emotional approach, even the non-Vulcans. And this might have something to do with the fact that the Vulcans helped found the Federation and had a big influence in early, the early days of the Federation, pre-Federation, post-Federation, and are still have a highly controlled part of the Federation. You notice that there are Vulcan officers, or tend to be Vulcan officers, on the early Federation on all the um, ships as the science officers. And then later, there's Vulcan officers on other ships. So, now next generation, you don't see too many, as many Vulcans, but you do know about them. They, they do show up. They are highly involved in the Federation of the politics of the Federation, the science of the Federation, the exploration of the Federation, and everything. So them being highly involved in it would probably make and would, would probably make their logical ideas influence or in and or influx all the rest of the uh, Starfleet. I don't know about the planet Earth, but at least Starfleet. Most of these points have to be made based off of Starfleet anyway, because yeah, I know I, I wrote it in Star Wars. Never mind that. But <laughs> and a rebellion one at that when uh, we're talking about a federation, which is like a imperial federation. <laughs> Maybe I'll actually do uh, try to figure out how the politics of Star Wars work in another video or something, even though a lot of people have already done that kind of stuff. I really didn't do the politics. I mean, I'm pretty sure people can point out over 40 points to make get where Star Trek seems more on the left-leaning side. But I was just trying to point out some stuff that are conservative in nature or seem conservative in my opinion in nature toward the right leaning side of Starfleet and Star Trek and the Federation. Anyway, remember God is good all the time. All the time God is good. Keep on gaming. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Jesus loves you. Jesus God. Jesus Lord. Jesus King. Jesus is ruler of everything. And uh, live long and prosper. And uh, if you disagree with any of these points, which I know some are weak, some are only a point because they back another point, or, you know, some, some of the points kind of merge together, so, you know, it's like stretching one point into two or three points. Um, I know that ha that's the case. But, uh, if you want to like disagree with some of those points, um, that's fine. Uh, you could you could claim that some of these points aren't necessarily conservative. They mean you could claim some of these points are kind of both sides of the aisle agree with, and that could be true. But that doesn't make. But if both sides of the aisle agree with them then that point still favors on the conservative side. Well, it, it, because if conservatives like it, it's a good point. It's a valid point for conservative side uh, in the debate uh, or argument or whatever. So I did this because, you know, B 
people are always talking about how Star Trek is like socialist and communist and maybe fascist to a degree and other various different things. When they do that, they label it so leftist all the time. Which, yes, all of those are leftist ideologies, even Nazism, which stood for National Socialist Party. All of those, again, are leftist ideologies, um, not right ideologies, not conservative ideologies, not necessarily even liberal ideologies, to be honest, because uh, the left has stolen the word liberal because the liberal... Huh. Liberal applies more to libertarians than leftists, actually, uh, to be honest. Liberal Yeah, exactly. Which actual liberal actual liberals that are more libertarian not too fond of socialism and communism. More true libertarians are in favor of individualism and rights and smaller government, which makes them tend to be more on the right side. But either way, go on the right side, you're gonna have it, or the left side, go too far either way, you're gonna have a authoritarian type government. It's just, that's just how it works. Anyway, um, politics. The never ending frontier. These are the voyages where only the brave and bold YouTube channels will go towards. Because not many people like it, especially when modern politics.